All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing, which is to walk through the Unity Events implementation. So I'm going to show you some examples on how I could we could use it for Unity games. And in fact, I can show you how I'm using it for my VR experience and why do I need to use Unity Events. So anytime you need to basically bind to an event, if you use a Unity Event, Unity actually provides a way to bind an event that you have on one page and then or one area to one event that it's going to trigger a method in another component for instance right now in my VR experience as I'm selecting colors I need to trigger the draw controller and tell it that I actually selected another color and the same thing with the with the slider if I change the value on the slider I need to tell other components that this slider changed. So one way to approach that is by using uh, in an event pattern. So in my case, I decided to use a Unity event, but I wanted not only to use a Unity event, but I also wanted to use a Unity event that takes different arguments. For instance, the slider that I have right here takes in a flow. So as I'm changing the value from zero to the maximum, that basically changes and that value is going to be a flow that I need to pass into another event. So the same thing with the color, as I'm changing the color, the this color is white, this might be red, and this one is blue. So as I'm changing those colors, the receiver needs to know what color I'm selecting. So not all the time that's going to be a string or it's not going to be a void method. Sometimes you need to actually send the object itself so that the other, the receiver, actually knows what's happening. So let's go ahead and, and run through a couple of things in here that I want to show you. So if we go to the VR controller options and I want to show you how a unit event looks like. So in this case, I have a, a unit event which is called online, on, online change. And if you look at it right here, it basically when you bind it, when you, when you expose it as a property in the inspector, it's going to look like this. They give you, Unity gives you this really nice UI where you can select you know which object you're going to be binding this event to and then what method you're going to be calling when that happens so behind the scenes there's some there's something called invoke and invoke is going to say okay which method am, am i going to be invoking and whatever method you bind in here that's going to be the method that gets called so if you look at this this is the vr controller option so this is one script this vr draw is another script it's a, something completely different and I'm calling that component method from these comp from these components. So, like I said, one way to call it is by actually creating creating a unit event, and then the, there is an action that you call by using an invoke, and that invoke will call that method. So in this instance, I know that update line width is going to take in an argument of flow, and I know that in this case the on minimum distance line change is also going to take in a flow so those are two examples that i'm using in in this experience the other example that i wanted to show you was if we go into if we expand it in here and we look at one of the controllers one of the colors in the controller and so this script is called vr color vr draw color and it also has a, a unity event so this unity event the arguments you can see this one it says color and if we go into our other one you can see that it says single. So what this means here is that this is going to take in a color. The method that I'm calling is going to, going to also take in a color. So this cannot be implemented by just using a unit event, a vanilla unit event, which means that you need to do additional work to make that work, but it's not that much work. So I'm going to show you that behind the scenes. So, so this is what's happening in here whenever I, I change a color and I invoke these unity event it's going to call this method so the thing that i want to show you is i'm going to add a couple of scripts in here and then we can walk through doing a very simple unity event that is going to be executed on load so let's say that you wanted to do you so i'm working on a networking piece for this experience where i need to connect to a tcp server and then that tcp server will identify me as a client but if somebody else jump in, jumps into the experience, they also need to connect as a TCP client so that I can see what they're drawing and we can all draw at the same time. That's kind of the idea. So 
instead of me making, you know, a throwaway example, what if we make something that, you know, I'm going to be using? So I need to know that, you know, I may need to have a couple couple classes that I'm going to be using. One is going to be the, the TCP server manager. We can, the TCP client manager, we can use that. And that manager can be the one that is synchronizing the, the drawings from other people with my own drawings. So let's go ahead and start something like that and we can see we can see how that shapes out and I can refactor it as we you know as I work on it. So I'm going to I'm going to create a new script and this one is going to be the TCP we can call it the TCP client TCP controller client. I think that works. And to be honest, I'm making this up as I go. I'm, I, I haven't really prepared. I was going to show you something else. But I think it's always fun just to play around with different ideas. And in fact, I'm going to need this. So this is, I, I like when I'm making things that I'm actually going to use and not things that we're going to be throwing away. So this one is going to be the TCP controller client. And let's go ahead and attach that script. And let's see. Let me go ahead and I'm going to go to assets and then open it open the C-sharp project and let's see so we have our TCP controller client so what I'm thinking of doing let's put that into a folder because I know that I'm gonna have a lot more classes in there and this one we're just gonna call it TCP we can do that or we can call it networking let's go ahead and call it networking since we're gonna use that a lot so this is gonna be the TCP yep I think that's that's fine let's go ahead and open it one more time Okay, and I think this is fine. So, a couple of things in here that I that I want to that I want to do. I I want to store the the points that I'm drawing. So I'm gonna have to keep track of that information somewhere else. But for now, I'm just gonna hard code it just to show you just to show you an example. And so in this example, I'm just gonna do a private. And then let's say that I have a vector vector 3 and this is going to be an array of points because I need to store okay what points I'm going to be drawing and sending and basically synchronizing me as a client to the server so I'm going to need I'm going to need to do let's go ahead and start start this uh, ver vector 3 0 so we're just going to have points and then for now we can oh, and I'm going to need an array I'm going to need to do something like this vector 3 let's do a new vector 3 array and then I think we can we can just do an empty array like that. Okay, so this is just gonna be this is just gonna start as zero. So and we can give it a, a an initial value. So this is gonna have a vector three, and then zero. It's gonna be the first point. So we're gonna start our zero, and that's gonna be the first point that we draw. Okay. So the next thing that I need to do is let's say that I want to I want to communicate with another class and that class so this one is a client the other class is going to be more of the I'm gonna need I'm gonna need another one to let's go ahead and duplicate this one I'm gonna need another one to get the information from the server so that I know what other people are drawing so for now we can just say let's just call this TCP controller server controller synchronization we can just call it sync Okay, so this one is gonna be responsible for saying, hey server, do I have anybody connected? And do they have any points that they're drawing? And then this one is just gonna be my own points that I'm that I'm drawing. So let me go ahead and rename. So this is gonna be that, and then I need to rename this. And perfect. And okay, excellent. So let's say that we want to tell this, we want to send an event to this class saying, okay, I change, you know, I have a new point and I need to I need you to get that point over to the server so normally we would have something like we can do something like a uh, we can do void let's do public void and then this will be the event that I'm going to be invoking from the other class so we can just tell it receive points and then in this one it's going to we're going to need to store the client ID for now I'm just gonna keep it simple. Let's just send let's just send this class a list of points. Awesome. 
and then let's say that we want to we also want to do another one where we're just notifying that we're connected we're just saying okay client we're connected so we're just gonna say connected and then this one let's say that we we know what the client id is so in this one let's actually do the same thing we need to tell this one that we have a client id and then we have a list of points and let's say that we also wanted to tell it we wanted to tell this class what color is are these points so we can say okay client id and then we can also do color and then color okay receive points so we just have an override in there and i think we can just remove this so we have three different methods this one is going to be a debug let's go ahead and do debug.log and then we know that this is going to be the method call so i'm just going to put the name of the, the name of the method there and on this one, I'm just going to do the same thing, but we're going to have more arguments. And lastly, this one is going gonna to say, OK, I'm connected. And I think it'll be cool if we just say, OK, this is the client ID. We, we just use our little interpolation here. OK, so we have three different methods. They're, they're not doing anything, but I want to show you how we can control some of these. So the other thing that I want to do is we can leave the star. I don't need the update. Perfect. And then let's say that here we say we tell it we tell this class that it's gonna be a serializable field. We also decided that we'll, we were gonna need the client ID and also the the color. So we're just gonna say client client ID. And we can just say default default thing that's fine. And then on this one, I'll just have to pass in a color. And then this is going to be a color. Let's go ahead and add a default. And this is just going to be, it's going to say black. We're just always, let's actually do white. We're always drawing in white. Okay, so we have those three properties that we can use now. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new, let's go ahead and create a new folder. This folder is going to have events. And let's go ahead and create a new class inside of it. And these are going to be our events. Awesome. And then in here, I'm going to have to use unity events. And, and the reason why I want to create classes to do this is because unity events by default won't allow you to pass in arguments. So you need to do something like this. I need to do public class, and then I need to tell it what I'm going to be. So if we go back to our synchronization, let's go ahead and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it right on the right, right here. And one is going to receive points with a client ID. So we can just say this event is going to be, let's see, we're going to call it client. It's going to be a client receive client points change. That could be that could be a, a fun one. And then this is going to be unity event. And then I think I just need to bring in a using statement, which I do. And then I'm going to need two arguments. One's going to be a string. And then the other one's going to be a vector a vector three which is going to be an array and let's see and i think that should work yep so so what what is this thing right here on the right normally you you see this on its own like this and, and that's the default unity event that you can just bind to another method but if you want to pass in arguments you need to match the receiver arguments which in this case is going to be client id and points so I know that I'm also going to need, so I'm going to need two more. This other one is going to require that we pass in a color. So I'm going to pass in a color as well. And that's going to be the argument of that. This is going to complain, I believe, if we don't change the name. So because this is a class, so it's going to be client points and color. We can just say in color change. And then we can say client connect it we're gonna say it's not change really it's it's going to be just client connected so we don't need to pass in the word change this one is going to take just a string which is going to be the name of the client this one right here it's going to and i think this is complaining because i don't have the let's see let me do this one more time color why is it complaining the name color cannot be found in the name, namespace 
okay so I think that's because let me look at my other event and make sure that okay unity engine that color I think it's trying to it's trying to grab it from drawing and we can let's go ahead and do let me go back to the other one and okay so it's just gonna be unity engine that color let's go back in here and I'm just gonna do unity oh I see I'm just I just need to bring that it, it's getting confused by using the one from drawing so we can just do this and then vector 3 is also complaining because it doesn't know if it needs to be the vector 3 from the engine and I'm just gonna say vector 3 or we can fully qualify a vector 3 okay sure we'll fully qualify it and then I don't know why this one came to be because normally okay there we go I think I added the wrong one and so these are three different events and they are matching or receivers so like I said you need to have the same arguments of the receiver on each one of these okay so so how do we use them and that's gonna be your next question so if we notice this is going to be the receiver class that it's taking the events, which is the one that I just showed you. But the client needs to communicate that to the receiver. So in this case, I could do something. I could do something like this. So I could map them here, and I'm going to say, "Oops, let me go. Let me go back in here." So I'm going to I'm going to have the three different unit events through the inspector. So to do that, we're going to have two columns. So I'm just going to put. Let's go ahead and put this class right here so that we can reference them. So I'm going to say private client points change and this is going to complain because it doesn't it doesn't have it maybe client nope and it looks like it did work and then the other one's going to be so we're going to need three more this other one is going to have to be points and color change this last one is just going to be client connected I can just call this one client connected. This one is going to be client points in color change. Okay, I think everything else looks good. And oh, I see why this is it's not finding it because it has this really long namespace where these ones don't have a namespace. So I'm just going to remove. I'm just going to remove that big namespace. And I'm just going to have it be completely accessible through any other classes, I'm just gonna, just gonna do that. And then now these guys should be able to find them. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is, we could do this on any type of method in the life cycle of a game, but for now we're just gonna do it in the start. So I'm just gonna say client, client, client points change. Or we can start with a client connector because that's the first thing that we're gonna, we're gonna have to do is, let's see if we are connected to the TCP server. So I'm just gonna say, okay, client connected, that, Normally I do a question mark because if you forget to bind some of these ones, it's always good to have a nullable check there. So that's always good. And then this is going to take in an argument. So normally you don't see arguments, but because we made it, we were actually overriding the implementation of Unity event, it's going to ask us to pass in the client ID, which is going to be the one on the top. And then we can do the same thing with, with some of these ones. This is also going to be invoked, but you're going to see that it's going to complain because client, client points change takes in two different values. One, one is going to be the client ID and the other one is going to be the points. Awesome. And then the last one is going to be the client points in color change. This one is also going to complain because it does take more than more than two arguments. It's also going to take the color so we can just pass in the color and which should be okay let's see why it's complaining the it's a type which is not valid in the given context oh i see because i made it uppercase all right so that looks good the other thing that i want to do i want to make sure that on my receiver i am printing the points because and also the client id because in this case so i copy the arguments i'm also going to change that let's go ahead and do this client id it's going to be client id and then points are going to be points. That way we know that we're getting all the different values. So let's go ahead and do that as well here. Except we're gonna have to add a new color too. So we're just gonna have to say color equal color. And I think everything else 
looks fine and then we don't need these using statements here we don't need this one okay the cool thing about this is i'm going to be able to use this for my own implementation so so awesome so we have a tcp controller client that is going to invoke unit events all these unit events take different arguments and then we also have a receiver that knows how to receive those arguments and print them to the log so, so the next thing that I'm going to do is let's go ahead and add some of those to let's add the controller TCP controller client to the class so let's go ahead and do that TCP controller client and then let's see yep and that work and then we're also going to need to add a new one this one is going to be the synchronization or we can just say synchronization we can we can change the name later in the class and then on this one i don't need this component i'm just going to add this one and this is going to be responsible for receiving so this is a receiver this is the sender the sender is the client and then we have different points so a couple of things in here you don't see is the unit events and that's because we didn't make him serializable so we need to make him serializable so that's the whole magic is being able to bind these two events through the inspector without having to do much code and let's just wait until this recompiles and it looks like it didn't it didn't work and i think it didn't work because we need to do something on this side let me look at my other example and we need to add these attributes to each one of the each one of the classes that we're creating for the unity events so let me go ahead and do that so this one's going to be serializable this one's also going to be serializable and let me undo that undo that i think i did that too many times awesome let's go ahead and go back into unity here and let it refresh and we should be able to see the the three different there we go so one of the cool features that i like about whenever you're basically inheriting from unity events is that it shows you which arguments do they take this one takes in a string this one takes in a string in a vector three this one takes in a string in a color in a vector three so we know without doing too much work what these events are bound to so i'm going to do add on every single one of these and then we're going to be adding the receiver on each one of these okay and then the other cool thing that i can do that gives this so much power is i can go ahead and look at everything that this object has and basically bind it to it so i know that i'm going to need so it looks like some of the methods they are are they showing this one is showing because it's connected but i'm not seeing let me see let me go back to the receiver and let's make sure make sure everything works so i'm not seeing the receive points in there let me make sure let me go back let's go ahead and, and do let's let's do the first one which is going to be connected and yep and that's going to be this one right here which is taking a string so it's going to be our first one so that's the first one that we're going to have the the next one is going to be our receive points which is going to be a client and let's go ahead and click on this drop down again let it recompile and we have receive points right here looks like it was showing it's just i i couldn't see it so and then we can do the same thing on this one and you can see here this is dynamic this says it takes in a string a color and a vector so it's going to call the right one if i were to add another one it's not going to find anymore because i already bound them so now we have three different methods and the, everything is bound so let's go ahead and see pull our console here and see if this is going to work and i'm going to hit play and give it a second here and these errors are normal these are all coming from the vr but the ones that i wanted to show you is are working i can see that the connected default is working you can also see that the other client default is working with my vector 3 and then i can see the last one where i'm getting the client i'm also getting the color which is the black color and then my points are also being drawn so that's honestly everything that i wanted to show you guys thank you